remember Casey and JoJo, those 90s R&B icons who gave us the jams we still can't get enough of? Okay, so what on earth would cause JoJo to drop his pants in front of an astonished crowd of 4,000? Was the glare of the spotlight too intense for their saintly upbringing? Let's delve into the juicy details of their rise and fall. From chart-topping hits to marital mayhem, from nights drowned in excess booze to run-ins with the law, Let's find out. On the chilly eve of December 19, 2000, amidst the cheer of 4,000 eager fans, JoJo decided to add a triple X twist to their performance, making it a night to remember or forget, depending on who you ask. Why did JoJo feel the need to turn the KIIS Christmas concert, where JoJo and KC were promoting their X album, into an R-rated spectacle, flashing his audience not once, but twice? It's one thing to promote an album titled X, but another to provide a live demonstration of why it's not just a letter in the alphabet. The stunt promoted a mass exodus, with fans, including the children, dashing for the doors to escape JoJo's version of a festive surprise. And, as the saying goes, pants down, hands up, because that's exactly where JoJo found himself. With the police slapping 23 counts of indecent exposure and one of lewd conduct on them, the mostly female audience was not amused. Casey, taking one for the team, pleaded no contest, earning him a merry little probation for two years and a not-so-small gift of $910 in fines. But the drama didn't stop there. Cut to April 2003. After serenading Raleigh, North Carolina with their smooth vocals, the brothers faced a different kind of music, tax evasion charges, courtesy of their performances from 1999 to 2001. Sheriff Donnie, clearly not a fan of encore performances, cuffed them right off the stage. Who knew the law had such a flair for timing? A Night in Jail was the opening act for their release on bail the next day. Cedric Casey Haley, born September 2nd, 1969, and Joel Jojo Haley, born June 10th, 1971, were music lovers from the beginning. They grew up in Monroe, North Carolina, and began singing in church, like many R&B singers of their time. They became known as a family gospel quartet, Little Cedric and the Haley Singers. Apart from their love for music, the brothers were quite the opposite. JoJo was more of a roughneck. He wanted to be outside and play football, whereas he would stay in the basement and practice for 10 hours a day after school, KC says. They were both little kids then. JoJo, JoJo's more like, he was a rough, he was a roughneck. Mm -hmm. JoJo wanted to go outside and play football. The brothers met Dalvin through KC's then girlfriend, Poo Poo. Yes, that's her name, no typo. Which later paved the way to forming a new group. Their first meeting was a disaster, as KC thought Delvin was messing around with his girlfriend Poo Poo and pulled out a weapon. He did, that was the original meeting. Uh, a girl group actually, a gospel girl group called Unity. You know, they was like, you know, because we had heard about each other in North Carolina, because they did the gospel circuit, but they were more like a quartet. You know, me and my brother more like a uh, contemporary gospel. And it's like, you know, y'all got to meet. Y'all can do something amazing together. And, you know, they always heard the, the, uh, the great brothers. We heard the uh, Haley brothers. And, uh, you know, they was like, you know, y'all should do something. Y'all should do something. So one night we said, okay, take us to meet them. And uh, we went to this the, the studio they had or whatever, whatever it was. And Casey thought I was talking to one of his, uh, his little girlfriends. She was in the group. And at the time, he pulled a pistol out on me. So, yeah. And you actually became cool after that? Well, not exactly. No, no not right exactly. after that. No, uh, well, Devontae actually stayed. Me and Casey got into a little altercation in the hallway, blah, blah, blah. And Devontae and Jojo went off to a room and started working on music. And so, therefore, Jojo was born right then, but it was Devontae and Jojo. It wasn't me and Casey. Casey went back to Merlin. He was working on some other stuff and with his gospel group. And I went my separate ways, you know. And after one, my brother was like, you know, man, they really cool, man. Come on down. And I was like, man, nah, you know, he pulled a gun out of me. Man, come on, man, really. I mean, did you think he was going to shoot you? I was going to shoot him because my cousin had a gun, too. So it's like, in case he got found out later, his gun didn't even work. It was like a little rinky dink 22. But, you know, it was going to just be all bad. But, you know, God works in mysterious ways. So it didn't happen like that. Then, then you know, me and Casey became best friends in the group after that. You know, not long after that, but we became yeah. best friends, yeah. 
Things eventually calmed down with their shared interest in music, and JoJo and KC joined Devante Swing DeGrade and Dalvin Mr. Dalvin DeGrade to form the R&B group Jodeci in 1988. With dreams bigger than their wallets, the crew hit New York with just $700 in a demo tape facing rejection after rejection. That is, until they wowed Andre Harrell at Uptown Entertainment with an impromptu a cappella performance right in the studio. Harrell, impressed and probably a bit surprised, took them out for a celebratory dinner, and by dessert, Jodeci was signed. Moving to New York was no fairy tale, though. Harrell hooked them up with a one-bedroom apartment in a Bronx project. Coming from a middle-class family in North Carolina, the Jodeci boys were in for a shock, rats included. And the living situation? Pure comedy. Four grown men, one couch, and a nightly battle royale to avoid bunking with the rodents. Only in the world of R&B, folks. The brothers JoJo and KC shot into stardom with the Forever My Lady album in 1991. It hit number 18 on the U.S. Billboard 200 with three chart-topping singles. Their debut album sold over 3 million copies. With Casey and JoJo, Jodeci released their second album, Diary of a Mad Band, in 1993, hitting number one on the R&B charts. With their success and fame, life became a party for the brothers. They traded for sleek BMWs, had their pick of the ladies, and the booze flowed like water. Sounds like every pop star's dream, right? Well, not so fast. That non-stop party lifestyle has been catching up with them, not in a good way. Have you heard about JoJo's recent performance of Lately? It was more like a cry for help than a concert. The man could barely stand up on his own two feet, and it wasn't because he was moved by the music. The crowd was buzzing, not with excitement, but with worry. Rumors swirled that he was having a heart attack right there on stage. So dramatic, the organizers had to whisk him away mid-performance. Talk about a showstopper, but not the kind anyone wants to be famous for. <sighs> However, JoJo's daughter, Sequoia Winter, has finally set the record straight about her dad's recent scare. In a tell-all interview, she dished out that JoJo's been battling diabetes. That's right, the sugar's been giving him a tough time, and he's been learning the ropes, pricking, injecting, and all that jazz to keep it in check. Sequoia's spillage is a refreshing sip of truth in a sea of rumors. JoJo's been quite the open book about his dance with alcoholism and the health drama it caused his pancreas. In a juicy tell-all, JoJo and Casey came clean about deciding to quit the party scene for good. Jodeci, Casey and JoJo, tons of hit records traveled all over the world. A huge success, a dream that we almost messed up. We've seen the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And we're sick and tired, tired. of the space that we're in. That's done, it's over. KC chimed in, saying it was high time they addressed the rumor mill head on. Diving deeper into their heart to heart, JoJo continued, revealing more about their decision to turn a new leaf. Getting a little too out of control now. Like you doing a video, take a picture, you got a fifth pull it up like that, drinking it straight? When I was drinking, I didn't give a damn. I didn't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? I didn't care what my lady say. I didn't care what my mom and daddy say. I didn't care what nobody say. I was doing that because Casey wanted to do it. Casey's going to always do what he wanted to do. When the brothers embarked on their 30 day journey to recovery, they encountered their extended family along the way. KC found himself face-to-face -face with his eldest son, Devin, for the first time since he was eight. 
The reunion was a mix of surprise, joy, and a touch of sorrow for KC. Despite the years apart, his love for his son was unmistakable. KC had been absent during his children's formative years. The demands of the music industry pulled JoJo and KC away from the everyday experiences of life, estranging them from their family and children. Witnessing Joel, JoJo's 16-year-old son, open up about his father's journey towards sobriety was a poignant moment highlighting the emotional distance that had grown over the years. That was a big surprise. Whenever he's intoxicated, he's ignorant. Whenever he's sober, he's a world-class man. Mary J. Blige, the R&B singer who had a high-profile relationship with KC during his early days of success, explained how difficult things became where things between them turned dark. But fellow R&B singer Casey Haley eventually turned dark. I've had to physically fight for my life a lot because just like my mom, I'm a fighter. My mom had to suffer a lot of physical abuse as well. So as a little girl, I saw her, this little woman fighting. This is what Danny had to say about Mary. It was at KC and it was a room service bringing us food. And it was said that he was kind of fighting her during, around that time and stuff like that. And she was kind of scared of him. Casey and Mary J. Blige never married, though Casey once bought her an engagement ring during the height of their relationship. But Casey denied having a serious relationship with Blige later when he was asked about the ring by the media. You can imagine how pissed Mary J. Blige was when she found out that Casey had given her a ring in private, but disowned the whole story in public. I thought you were engaged, you know, I said, yeah, I'm engaged, I was happy. And, um, and she said, well, let me show you a clip. <laughs> I have to ask you this really quickly. Uh, Jodie Sue on the show uh, earlier on in the series, and uh, Terry asked Casey this question. Have a look at this. Uh, you're going to break a few hearts because uh, I've heard that you, you're going to marry Mary J. Blige, aren't you? No! <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's a rumor for the states, too, you know. Casey is not getting married. <laughs> Now, is it, was he being super cool or what? Are you getting married? No, we're not getting married. I was just going to say, I'm very glad no, to No, we're not getting married. <laughs> we're not getting married now. No, married now. Oh. Oh. So there's oh, no huge God. engagement ring. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Let Whatever. On, please. Okay. But now? And that killed me. Right there, that let me know. Oh, uh, okay. It's not all, you know. And that was a nightmare in itself, the whole, the whole situation. He went on to marry his longtime girlfriend, Cassandra Haley, and had two children, while Mary J. Blige has never had children of her own. Recently, he had this to say about his relationship with Mary. Number one, I was young. We both was young, and our careers were colliding like that. And, um, I mean, we, like I said, we was young, man, and I wasn't ready to settle down, especially with my career taking off and her career taking off. It just wasn't, it wasn't going to mix. It, it wasn't going to, it wasn't going to happen. But I did, and I always will love her. You know what I'm saying? Um, before, we was friends before, so we're still going to keep it that way. And, uh, and if she's listening or watching, Mary, you know I still got love for you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But um, it's like we had to, we had to slow it down, man. I was doing my thing with the Joe to see thing, and she doing the thing with the Mary J. Blige thing. We had to do what we got to do, man. And, 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 and that's thing. right. That's right. That's right. It became yeah. an ego thing between yeah. them. Ah, an ego thing. Yes. Yeah. He going to tell Mary what she can and cannot do, and she going to tell him, try, try her best to tell him what he can and cannot do. And by she, by she thought she had authority over him, he, he knew that he had more power than her because at that time we was selling major right, albums. Right, right. And she was just coming out getting known. Mm. And so what, what this this my perspective. And uh, you know, pretty much an ego thing. And it went, it just started, I mean, it started getting physical. And I remember my brother, he left, he left, he left a mansion in Long Island. He left mink coat, a cars, TV. And took a flight to Atlanta. Called me on my birthday. We like where KC at. He he called me on my birthday. Music loud, jam packed. He never came back to that house. That was it. 
That's it. Hey, Is there any particular reason why you never came back to the house, dog? Yeah, yeah, man. I couldn't go back to the house, man, because, um, you know, um, too many memories. Too many memories. All of them wasn't bad, either. Sometimes. Sometimes you want to go. You don't want to go back to the good memories. You know what I'm saying? You got some things you just gotta just let it go. JoJo's love life with his wife Tiny is not much different. Would you believe their daughter learned that her mother was dating someone else only during an episode of Growing Up Hip Hop? JoJo and Tiny have been very silent about their relationship for over a decade. But learning that her mother was dating Lazy Bone, her mentor, shocked Sequoia. Though separated, Tiny said there is no ill will between them. I really don't know how he feels. I'm sure that he's in a great place mentally and moving forward, she added. Casey is 54 years old and his net worth is $3 million, while JoJo is 51 with a net worth of $1 million. The brothers may have gone through a lot, but KC Sober is still a force to be reckoned with. And the best part is that KC and JoJo are coming back. It may be decades after their debut, but Jodeci reunites with all four original members at House of Blues Las Vegas at Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino from March to July 2024. Any plans to join your favorite crew?